Welcome to this podcast on Pisces rising. I'm going to start the podcast by talking about Pisces. Pisces is an astrological sign. It is the 12th astrological sign or is the first, depending on how you want to look at the zodiac. You see, the zodiac is often perceived as beginning with uh, Aries and then ending in Pisces. But the reality of the fact is that since the zodiac is concerned with mind, human mind, then the development of human mind starts in the fetus when the fetus is still in the womb of its mother it's in a watery environment that's where it begins to develop it develops around the weightless environment induced by water amniotic fluid and it is within that environment that it develops into what we now perceive as a human that is now delivered through the birth canal well that watery environment that amniotic fluid that weightless environment that's pisces so one can argue both ways. You can argue that Pisces is the true beginning of the zodiac, or it is Aries. Depending, Aries is the, the zero point of Aries. It represents the part of the ascendant when the child is actually born, and takes the first gulp of air. Now that ascendant point, I have described it in many of my podcasts as the point when the child takes in oxygen for the very first time. And oxygen is a corrosive gas; it burns. And you know, I described in my in my training programs. I describe how this leads to the birth of self-awareness okay in great detail i'm not going to do that here now in talking about pisces uh we have to understand that as an astrological sign pisces is given a symbol and is given a glyph a glyph is a representation of what it means and the symbol for pisces is uh the the pair of fish that swim in opposite directions now it's important that Pisces is associated with water. It's important to get that straight away because, and the reason for that is because uh, Pisces represents the uh, the final evolutionary point in the way that I divide the zodiac into three categories. Now, the first category starting from Aries to Cancer, the second from Leo to Scorpio, and the third from Sagittarius to Pisces. Now, in these three categories, you can clearly see that uh, the development starts with the uh, with a fire sign and ends in a water sign. Now, this categorization is something that I invented. You're not going to find it in any other textbook or any other uh, uh, discussion on astrology. Um, so, Pi- Pisces represents the culmination point. Whatever evolution is supposed to be, it represents the end point or it represents the starting point. Now, that brings a particular emphasis to the nature of the zodiac that it's not a circle, it's a helix. The beginning is the end and the end is the beginning and on and on it goes you know why is this surprising it is not and when you understand astrology to a certain degree you begin to understand why it is absolutely necessary the nature of that helix okay now the symbol is like i've said a pair of fish swimming in opposite directions now what is this symbol what is the nature of this what is the meaning encoded within this symbol well Obviously, swimming is not is a very particular act, you know, and that's why uh, it's representing the movement through water. And if you watch the way you know fish swim in in water, you see that they sway from side to side in a sense, and they use a, they employ a fin and they employ a tail to move through the water. Now. The watery environment is a very different environment. Like I've, I, you know, I often joke in, the, in when I discuss the nature of Pisces that in Pisces there's an inversion. We terrestrial creatures, when we look at the concept of heaven and hell, we look at the space above us as representing heaven, and the space below us as representing hell. You know, it's just one of many dichotomies that our minds are suited to. To understand in the case of Pisces it is very different heaven would be the depths of the ocean hell would be the the, the sky the the the, the um, you know the heights of the sky because fish don't breathe air most fish that is don't breathe air they breathe they cannot breathe outside their watery environment And so most land creatures, especially birds that fly high in the sky, fish perceive them as creatures in the depths of hell because a fish going to that height would suffocate and, you know, and this is a 
just like a, a terrestrial living creature, birds going to the depth of the ocean would suffocate because they cannot breathe. So you see that Pisces is already talking about a dichotomy. And this, di- this nature of dichotomy is something that is very intrinsic to mutables. Because Pisces is the mutable of mutables, in a sense. That's the mutable categories that start with Gemini. And Sagittarius ultimately uh, find, uh, you know, mutability in Pisces, so to speak. So Gemini is mutable air. Virgo is mutable earth. Whatever that means. Um, Sagittarius is mutable fire. And Pisces is mutable water. Okay. Now, these are the mutables, and they're very interesting, these mutables, because they represent the potential for change. They are constantly in motion. They are essentially descriptive of the way inspiration moves, the way uh, reality moves, the way the mind moves, and the way emotions flow. So, Pisces would represent the mutability of emotions. And so you can expect that the Piscean itself, right, does not inculcate the nature of stability, whatever stability is supposed to mean. Because there's no reference, there's no singular reference point within Pisces. Pisces is by its very nature unstable because it's nothing really. And so most astrology texts will describe the essence of Pisces as the dissolution into nothingness. It shares this quality with Neptune, by the way. Okay, so you ask yourself, how do people born under the auspices or, you know, the, the, the influence of Pisces, how do they respond to a world that, that, you know, that doesn't, that basically we consider to be material? I mean, touch whatever it is around you. Chances are that you perceive whatever it is that you're touching to be fixed and material-like in nature. Well, that is the dichotomy. That is the nature of the of the of of the issue with Pisces. Is that Pisces or significant Piscean placements simply do not reconcile to a reality that is fixed, a reality that is constant, and a reality that looks material, whatever material is supposed to mean. You know, they simply cannot reconcile to that because the nature of their self awareness, especially for those who have significant placements in Pisces and rising is a very significant placement. You simply cannot perceive the nature of this fixicity. It, you know, you don't have the reference point to handle these fixed environments. So, what does Pisces do? It does the next best thing. It mimics fixicity. It mimics materialism. Okay? Now, we're going to talk about how this mimicry works in great detail. Okay? But going back to the symbolism and the glyph of, of Pisces, this two, two fish, this pair of fish swimming in opposite directions, this is the essential dilemma within Pisces. It's an engine of sorts because it represents a great deal of dynamism. And so one fish basically represents this constant mutability. The second fish represents the need to exist in a physical world, in a world that is material, that does not change per se. And so this is the contradiction that is embedded within every Piscean personality, every significant Piscean placement. This contradiction is embedded within it because this is the nature of of the struggle. Those with significant Piscean placements are not totally here and yet they must be here in order to survive here. So they have been you know, they have th- their essential task is to wrestle with this dilemma. How can I be here and not be here at the same time? So you can understand that within human nature, I mean, your body basically, the physical body, the physical human body, it changes, but it changes gradually. But there is, there is an aspect of human nature that, change, that can change very rapidly, and that is the human mind. It is within the human mind that you now have the ability to sense your human emotions and all that. Okay? So that is the aspect of Pisces that is rapidly changing while the physical form hardly changes. I mean, it changes just like every other physical form, you know, physical body, slowly and gradually. So the essential dilemma that the Piscean has is to reconcile mind and body. 
what's going on in the mind in the form of the fluidity of the emotional state and the physical body this is the essential challenge and it is typified by this pair of fish swimming in opposite directions now the result because like i said it's like an engine the result of this dynamic potential simply means that there is a current of sorts currents in inverted commas that is currently f that is always flowing between that which moves very rapidly and that which resists change that current right is what the piscian is all about because the current is trying to equalize the two states together you can get a feel for this in the nature of how electricity is, is generated electricity the current electric current flows between two potential differences these are voltages that are basically uh with a potential that are, are different from each other and so nature does not allow that nature wants to reconcile these potential differences and so it does so by allowing a current to flow between them now the essence of that current is to bring both voltages or both potential differences into neutral and so in order to maintain the flow of current you have a generator that constantly maintains the potential difference between these two voltages and that's how you have a current that can keep flowing either a direct current or an alternating current the same is what takes place in the mind and the personality of a piscian all right nature is constantly trying to resolve the recon to rec reconcile the difference between the part of them that is very movable very changeable and the part of them that changes very gradually and that creates a current the way the piscian experiences this current is in the changing personality and so what the pice can really embodies is the ability to change so drastically and so randomly it's almost like if you do not understand the mechanism by which this is taking place within them you will be befuddled you will be perplexed by their behavior and this in in a sense to a general extent would happen wherever you have pisces in your natal chart but when Pisces is rising, it becomes the theme of the life. The theme of the life is just to reconcile these two things. And that's what the life story will be all about. Every other placement within a natal chart will tell you how this reconciliation process is supposed to play out. The narrative, essentially, you know. Of course, the narrative is reconciliation between these two dynamic points. But the idea is, what is the nature of that reconciliation? What is the rate how far does it go? What is expected of it? Now, that's the interpretation of the natal chart. But the theme itself would be that these two dynamic points needs to, need to be reconciled. Because the individual is struggling for one thing. Because one part of them is rooted in fixicity, in a sense. The other part of them stretches all the way to that which changes the most. And so, in a sense, the person is able to intuit the existence of what? dichotomies to an extreme it's, it, it's like taking the dichotomy that represents gemini and then taking it to its extreme so within the human being you are it's most piscians harbor within themselves absolute emotional contradictions that are sitting together now the result is that it generates a tremendous the potential for a tremendous amount of confusion and so piscians are always trying to sort out within their heads what is applicable and what is not you would be mistaken to think that they exist in a state of awareness like the normal people do they don't constantly within them they are trying to resolve to reconcile these two aspects of nature within them and that's why they they, they need to spend a lot of time in solitude because the reconciliation of this right it's a remarkable thing because once they're able to reconcile these two aspects of their nature then it opens up a power like you know a, a beingness of some kind that is truly truly mesmerizing a piscan who has found this power right they are able to blend you know th these are people who are able to tap into the secrets of nature because the reconciliation process means that they blend into the nature of existence it's like a drift you know it's a it's like a it's a cognitive drift of some kind or some a type of emotional drift where the individual basically slows down 
their cognition and their emotional awareness they slow down to the point where they are able to synchronize with nature and this is a very powerful thing because if you must learn the secrets of nature you must be able to become nature that's how you learn the secrets because at the end of the day nature you can only perceive it as yourself but most people can't do this and that's the superpower of pisces when it's operating at an elevated uh, uh cognition you know and for it to elevate for it to operate at this elevated in this elevated state it must have performed the reconciliation within itself as a conviction otherwise the result is just confusion and in the confused state the piscian begins to try to survive and that involves creating a lot of realities that are false telling so many stories and so many lies creating things that don't exist you know i mean if if, if this is channeled applicably you have a mind that is capable of uh, um of inspirational imagination so to speak you know you find very highly imaginative people who are great storytellers i mean if they don't find application constructively then they find it destructively but the destruction is always targeted at self because after a while the individual is so confused they caught in a mesh of falsehoods that the individual begins to struggle with a sinking feeling like a feeling of you know of not being able to go anywhere or achieve anything that is a classic Piscean type of uh, situation where it's like the individual is just dissolving into nothing and so when things begin to go wrong with a Piscean there is a potential for a very strange type of depression it's not sadness per se it's just insi- total insignificance a dissolution into nothing and I, I, I want to suspect that that is one of the most dangerous kinds of depression which is where you just dissolve into nothing. You have no significance and you feel that there is no point to anything. It's not sadness per se. It's just total detachment from everything. It's very dangerous. Because the mind begins to play tricks where the person just at some point may begin to intuit that there is really no essence in life. There's no point in life. There's nothing. Life is nothing. Okay? But I don't want to dwell on the negatives because within every natal chart is the potential for this greatness that I've talked about where the Piscean mind is operating at an elevated level where they're able to synchronize with the nature of reality. And with from that synchronization, they bring down knowledge, wisdom, because the wisdom itself coincides with the, the cycles of nature especially when the asteroid series is within somehow placed within this combination okay remember the idea is to be able to sort out what's going on in their heads because everything appears on the same scale immaterial but we know that the reality that we exist in and which we must excel and survive in has some parts of it that don't really shift they don't really move per se those are the parts that the Piscean mind struggles to understand okay and so the everyday type of life day-to-day living of how things need to remain the same in terms of a static organization a framework these are the aspects of reality that the Piscean struggles with for instance bills the idea that you have to work every single day and then just to pay bills the, the Piscean mind simply has no way to grapple with this type of it's like a death sentence because it has no purpose no intrinsic meaning and the mind of the Piscean is trying to elevate beyond the mundane beyond the ordinary it really wants to connect to something that is beyond existence itself and so any system any framework that prevents the Piscean from being able to access this level of extraordinary inspiration or imagination, it's seen as a threat. And the Piscean has so many games that they play in order to be able to combat this threat. Okay? Now, this is, uh, you know, this is intrinsic to most Piscean placements. But as a rising sign, this is more potent. The rising sign scan placement is more powerful than the the uh, the solar sign because it's the the solar sign simply comes 
the sun in pisces is activated whenever the individual needs to become something to achieve something like an objective to plan to execute and all that because that is the focus the self-aware focus of the sun that is represented by the sun but as an ascendant it becomes the quality of the life experience within which everything is located so it's like uh, the box the container within which all the other placements are located and so the person encounters the Piscean influence in everything because that is the nature of the reality system that they are born into this goes for all rising signs okay your rising sign is the most phenomenal part of your existence of your experience because it is uniquely you it is so intimate to you that it is not really a quality or condition that you can share with anyone else okay and part of the of natal chart synthesis which i teach as a as a as training programs is to come to understand the intimate nature of the rising sign okay because that is what the entirety of the natal chart describes you know for instance if your rising sign is in pisces and your sun is in the 10th house you are going to struggle now the sun in the 10th house by its very nature it's it is difficult because it has great expectations attached to it the expectations that come from the individual themselves and the 10th house is the height of material uh, exhibition and the Piscean rising sign is antagonistic to that very material exhibition. So there is a conflict. And the sun basically in the 10th house where Piscean rising basically is telling you about the nature of that conflict. It is phenomenal. It's very high. It's very, it's very powerful. So that the reward from the reconciliatory process itself, measure for measure, is equally powerful. And the same type of interpretation would go for every other placement, every other placement around the natal chart. It's, it all it is doing it, it is simply describing the quality of that Piscean rising sign. Okay. Now, we've all heard of the the age of Pisces. You know, we've been talking about how the age of Pisces, the last couple of thousand years, people say also. Well, the good news is that the age of Pisces is officially done, by all accounts. Okay, and by my. Uh, reckoning it was finally completed on the 23rd of march uh 2023 when pluto went into aquarius it started its ingress into aquarius for the very first time uh you know in 200 and something years but notwithstanding is because that is really important because it represents the final stage of entry into the age of aquarius now people would think that but the age of aquarius seems to have started a long time ago because we've had all this technology all this social media and all that well news flash social media is piscian all current efforts at ai and all these things they're all piscian and i'll explain why now the nature of Aquarius and the nature of Pisces is different only in terms of resolution. And what does it mean to resolve something? In order to, if you use a microscope, for instance, and you're trying to resolve the microstructure of things, right? You're able to enlarge it in such a way that you can see the microstructure. Resolution also applies to telescopes when you are trying to resolve distant objects in such a way that distant objects look very close. So resolution is about focus. And that is the difference between Aquarius and Pisces. The focus level in terms of understanding is greater in Aquarius than in Pisces. Because in Pisces, you don't see how anything goes anymore. And that's why the reality of the matter is that nobody really knows what Pisces is. Nobody really knows what it's supposed to be. The only stable aspect of the archetype is that it is a dissolution into nothingness. So when you take that uh, stable archetype and you try to in introduce it into, what does this mean for the human mind? A dissolution into, into nothingness. Because a dissolution into nothingness simply means that you are regressing from birth back into the wateriness of, of, of pre-birth. What does that look like? I'll tell you, at some point in time in the developing fetus, 
a mind sparks into being. Now, what is a mind? The connection between a mind, right, and the, the developing fetus has to do with the senses. You see, human beings have a quality of mind that is not found in any other creature on this planet. And I have a lot of podcasts, although they're this more science-oriented podcasts that tell you exactly how mind develops and why. So maybe it's best not to repeat it here. Maybe it's best to allow you to go, you know, listen to those podcasts. They're all in, on my channel, so you can look for them and find them. There is a point in which mind begins to develop as a quality of the sensorial, all the sensorial inputs. Now, the mind does not have a quality of self attached to it at that point because the development of mind is a spectrum, meaning that it doesn't really have a clear cut origin, you know, where it begins. It gradually develops and fades in. And the sense of self that is associated with humanity, with human beings, doesn't really kick in until you're really old enough in terms of maturity. And that's why for most things that human beings do that has any real purpose and meaning, you are said to be 18 years or 21 years before you are legally allowed to do that. And that's because you don't really know who you are or what you are until your mind is sufficiently well developed. Part of, you know, outside the development of your physical senses, the Germanian experience is the integration of those senses into a what? into a sense of interaction with your environment because that's what you do you begin to learn the rules of what it means to be human to have a mind and so the regression is the dissolution into nothing is going back all the way back through the signs back to the ascending ascendant point back into the nothingness from which you came okay so people don't really understand what that means and so, in the absence of precise frameworks to guide the archetypal development of the Piscean, right, the mind is free to make up whatever. And that's exactly what happens. The resolution that is, that is sought within Pisces is so complex that within Aquarius, you can hardly see how it goes. You can... But you will perceive reality as a series of interconnected complex systems. Which represents the cutting edge of scientific thinking. By the time this morphs into Pisces, you don't see how it goes anymore. The systems all begin to blend into one. And there is no framework for that. At least not yet. Except you are uh, connecting or reading or going in depth into my... uh, my book, The Five Principles of Organized Complexity, because that's, what I, that's exactly what I describe. The unification of all of human experience into oneness. What does that look like? That is essentially what Pisces is all about. It wants to unify everything in its cognitive experience into one. It's like, you know, every one of, most of us who are, you know, if you've attended high school, it's chances are that you would have come across the mathematical phenomenon of a set. A set is just something that, a way of including things into a category, in a sense. But you have different types of sets, but each set is a matter of cognition because it is your ability to find the commonality between things. Now, the, the, the essence of the Piscean and what makes their entire existence very challenging is that they are trying to find the commonality for everything. In science, you would call that a unified field theory. And when the Piscean begins to plug into the highest part of their cognition, they bring down absolutely amazing scientific theories theories that just blow your mind because how do you know this how did did you come to figure this out well they do that because they are tapped into the very structure of nature and they can only do that because they can slow everything down and drift they can take a single moment and stretch it considerably and within that moment they can find They become nature itself. It's not an easy thing to do. What I'm describing is extremely difficult. Many Piscians will never be able to do this. Because to do this, you have to overcome the sense of the futility, the sense of confusion, the sense of of nothingness that you constantly are immersed in. 
and this is very hard, especially with the modern day world impinging on your senses. Okay, you're constantly being disturbed by these intrusions that it is hard to find the wherewithal or the space or the time to just drift into nothing. And so Piscians that crave this, because it is a calling of your soul, Piscians that crave this are drawn towards things that can allow them to achieve this type of things artificially, like drugs, like alcohol. You see, it's not the alcohol per se, it's not the drugs. They want to, they want to experience the, the deepest yearnings of their soul. Which the modern day world will simply not allow them to, or the conditions that they're born into, or whatever, will simply not allow them to. But within the natal chart itself, because the natal chart, if you've experienced my classes, you will come to understand the natal chart as a complex system. And within complex systems, there are trajectories. That's what those aspects that you see, the square, the opposition, the conjunction, all these aspects, there's so many of them. Those aspects represent trajectories, pathways, and those pathways are what? They are the, the way that your cognition interacts with various aspects of itself. That's really what it is. These are some of the secrets that I teach. You are interacting with yourself on various levels. And like reflections in a, in a mirror, in, in multiple mirrors, some parts of it appear real, some don't. Some are obtuse, meaning you don't really understand the interaction. And when you don't understand an interaction, you externalize it as a physical reality. That's really how it works. So the Piscean is constantly externalizing realities that they do not understand. And they're considerable. Because they really don't belong to this world. They're on their way out of this plane of existence, so to speak. The Piscean also, in order to be able to drift and experience this search for oneness, find themselves also in, in, in situations that they describe as spiritual. Well, what is spiritual? I've explained this in many of my podcasts. Spirituality simply means that which is beyond your rational explanation. Your ability to rationalize, which basically stops at the edge of what? Aquarius. Because you don't see how it goes anymore. And so you have mysticism, which simply means that your mind cannot penetrate into the inner workings and the details. So the explanations that are brought out have no logicality or rationality behind them. And so the, the Piscean is yearning for this state of affairs. And so there is a tendency for them to mystify not only themselves, but also the reality around them. And then they are drawn to this mysticism in search of what can only be described as a spiritual connection. Now, for those who, already, who also have Mercury that is placed within Pisces, this is even taking a step further. Because now the mind has a potential for extreme confusion. Because the mind, the logicality and the rationality of the mind is constantly trying to spiritualize the entire environment. But we know that there are parts of the environment that, that are open to rational explanation. But the Mercury in Pisces doesn't have access to this, basically. They basically have access to just the unification of the entire environment into one. And that's extremely hard to find. So the result is that they struggle with, uh, with uh, um, understanding what is real and what is rational, what can be treated as rational, and what is treated solely as spiritual. Okay? But as a rising sign, there are often pathways that are there within the natal chart to help the individual to navigate this confusion. Now, that brings us to another part. When Pisces is rising as your ascendant, then there is the, the overall theme of your life also includes the fact that your mission in life is hidden. There's an aspect of it that is hidden. Necessarily so, because there are things that you're supposed to do that if people, if even you knew about them, you would destroy it or you would damage it or something. So it is hidden from you. So when you have Pisces in your natal chart or significant placements in Pisces, things are usually hidden from your mind. Now, when you try to understand exactly how they go, you can't. The result is the typical confusion that most Pisces experience until they sort out the hierarchy of what is real and what is not within themselves. 
Okay. In the meantime, while they are doing this, they appear extremely changeable. And that is why it is extremely important that people with significant Piscean placements, especially the rising sign, you need to be in environments that inspire you towards constructive outlets. Because if you find yourself in environments that do the opposite, it will drain you and pull you down into a reality system that you don't want to be in. But you'll be seduced by it so much, you won't, it'll be hard for you to get out. And that is one of the natures of addiction. Not just the, the environment includes other people. You must be in uplifting environments that match your highest aspirations. Otherwise, you know, it's much, much difficult. So you can see that within Pisces itself, you have the potential for the highest and the lowest. Which is in keeping with the fact that Pisces is the beginning and the end of the evolutionary system. Which is why it is a helix. Okay? Now, I know I skipped over the fact when I said uh, most of social media and technology and all that is all Piscean. It is. I mean, in order to understand that, you need to understand the origins of all of these things. You know. When... The age of Pisces began. Humanity didn't really know what to do with it. They weren't prepared for it. Because Pisces is such an elevated form of consciousness. Nobody really knows what it is. To start with, it's infinite and it's nothing. So how do you reconcile that? How do you come to terms with that? So that within the human psyche, the yearning for the Piscean energy morphs into a yearning for the creator, for the universe, universality in everything. The oneness and everything. Most people don't know what to do with that. And so, in order to uh, sort of like take advantage of that process, religion was introduced. Otherwise, people don't, you know. Now, religion tapped into the nature of this search, this yearning. Okay? Now, everybody has their perspectives on what religion is or what it has been or whatever. But religion by its very self is not necessarily Piscean. Okay? In the, in, the, in the area of Christianity, what is Piscean is the symbol for Christianity. Because the original symbol for Christianity wasn't a cross. It was a fish. That's really, most people don't know this. Because Christianity was forged to take advantage of the age of Pisces. And so, the, you know, since Pisces represents the most elevated form of human consciousness... That elevated form is experienced as a yearning for oneness. And when a human being begins to experience that, they are swamped with feelings of compassion. Because you are, that elevated uh, sense of self no longer belongs to the, st the stability or the fixity of this world. And so within the human being, it is experienced as an intensity of compassion. An overflowing of compassion. That is the highest potential cognitive potential for the human mind but it can also be extremely detrimental especially because this was this, this type of experience was designed for when human beings are about to leave this world it wasn't designed for young people that sense of m compassion begins because the mind doesn't really know what to do with it considering the fact that the world has a lot of fixed unchangeable or slowly changing variables so that the mind begins to investigate martyrdom self-sacrifice and things like this this is not very good for young people young people are born into reality for a life a story a narrative your life and part of experiencing life means that you have to go about life but if you if you're swamped with these kind of feelings you're going to intuit the nothingness of life from a very early age and this is not very helpful and so even those people who have the planet neptune very early in the natal chart this creates a lot of confusion in the mind and part of the work i do in natal chart synthesis is to help to cl clarify this especially when you have pisces rising or when you have neptune very close to the ascendant or in the first house it creates a lot of confusion regarding what the nature of reality is supposed to be and how to go about it and so most of the problems start from there. Because it is such an advanced feeling. It's, new, it's not usually not suited for being so early within the, the, the natal chart itself, within the, the, the life experience itself. 
So it one, becomes one of the challenges. But like I said, it's a double-edged sword. Once you can overcome the initial limitations imposed by this type of uh, uh, placement, then it becomes an extraordinary strength. This is part of the, 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 the synthesis that I do, just to, to clarify how this can be an extraordinary strength. Because you got to know what to do with that energy, that functional light itself. So the age of Pisces has represented a great confusion for humanity. That's really what it is. The last 2,160 years, 60 years has represented something like a great tragedy in human experience. Because instead of engaging, the ability to engage the highest forms of the Piscean archetype simply led to the lowest forms of the Piscean archetype, which involve things like deception, falsehoods, you know. And that's the danger. That's the inversion. You know, and the reality becomes inverted, where truth becomes false and false becomes truth. And everything is inverted in the, in the consciousness. And that becomes a difficult thing to unravel. But as the interface between Pisces and, remember, the, the procession of the equinoxes, they go backwards rather than forwards. So Pisces becomes Aquarius, which is contrary to how the zodiac naturally flows within human life itself. And there's a reason for that, but I won't talk about that here. That's explained in my, my natal class on why astrology works. Okay, So if you want a detailed explanation there... You, you need to join my class. It's, you, know, you can experience my classes as videos. The lectures are already recorded. Or you can have a live session. It depends on what suits you best. But that's really what it is. And so as the age of Pisces becomes Aquarius, those black boxes of, of, of things that are opaque and, you know, and, and, and confused and, and false, they cannot go into Aquarius. They stop at the, they stop at the boundary. You can't take them. And this, people experience this in lots of ways. Okay, you have a, a sense that there is all of reality, all the reality that you have known has been false. That's that thing trying to resolve itself because it cannot cross over. And because it's Pisces, it brings me to another aspect of the Piscean nature, which is Pisces is not a personal energy per se. It is an energy that tries to unite everything into one experience, and that includes everybody. So it is an energy that, is, that literally, con it's so fine and so high that it is unknown. But what it does is, because everyone experiences it in, at some level, it tries to connect everybody together. So it becomes that aspect of human nature that is connected together across everybody. And so what does this, what does this, imply pisces represents the depth of space what we call space interstellar space intergalactic space etc etc because when everybody looks up they see the same thing what they're really doing is they're looking into the deepest aspects of what what it means to be aware self-aware conscious because you cannot experience the the only way human beings experience the universe is as themselves if there's really anything out there what it is you have no idea beyond what your senses inform you of and so pisces is said to connect the masses of people on earth into one that's really what it is so Pisceans have the ability not just to tap into nature but to drift into the collective consciousness of all humankind this is extremely powerful. <laughs> you guys, do you have any idea what this means? It means that they are able to tap into the nature of trends. And when they can find a constructive outlet for this, it is phenomenal. Because these are the people that tell you what the future is going to be. Because they can feel it. Unlike the Aquarian Uranian that, you know, they catch glimpses of this, flashes of this. The Piscean ones, they have resolved the... the the drama going on in themselves and in their heads, they can literally morph into this whenever they want. It's a powerful, powerful um, sense of being. It's just that, you know, 
it has challenges because if you cannot tell differences in space and time, it's you, it's mental illness. That's what we classify this as. A human being that exhibits that continuously, you'll just be taken to the psychiatric hospital because you cannot, you'll be in all times and in all places. How do you know what is real? How can you tell the difference anymore? So in our modern day reality, you'll just be classified as a paranoid schizophrenic or some other mental illness. Okay? But that's really what it is. It's a, it's a very powerful way of being. One interesting uh, consequence of this ability of the Piscean personality to blend into the connectivity of all human beings is that this is the typical definition of what it means to have mass media. So within the Piscean, they embody the ability to connect to everybody. So if, you, if they have a message, for instance, and they can develop the constructive outlet, that thing connect, has the ability to connect to everyone. So if you have significant placements in your 12th house, for instance, that's an opportunity for mass media communication. But as a result of this, you know, as a result of the way this Piscean feels, you can clearly see that this is not the type of experience, self-experience, that readily connects to people on a very personal level, individual level. They are more suited to connecting to everybody than they are to connecting on an individual emotional level. The Piscean is unfathomable, meaning that there is no depth. They do not experience a depth, a, a, a bottom to their personality. It goes on forever. So when they go in, they basically can go all the way forever. Most people are not suited to dealing with this in the everyday type of reality. And so Piscean, people with significant Piscean placements, in their true nature, they cannot really connect and have friends per se. People who understand them because they hardly understand themselves. And so what the Piscean does is they create different personas for different situations to different people. By the time they're old enough and grown, right, they have created so many personalities within themselves, so many ways of being with many various different types of people in different circumstances, that when the Piscean retreats into seclusion, what they're really doing is trying to come to terms with the various multiples of these personas that they have created. Because the question constantly gnaws at them, who am I really? Am I this one? This am I this person or this person or this person? Because these personas are all different personas. Because the Piscean, like I've described, has the ability to morph into any type of personality that they want. So they're very accommodating and very accepting. Of, it's not really acceptance per se, but they try to blend in because they cannot push back. So it's almost like every situation demands something new from them, and they're response to this is to create a persona to match the new demand by the time they're grown and well mature and well developed they have created so many personas and they struggle with this that's why they need to retreat into solitude the personas become very disturbing very difficult to manage because the question remains which of these personas is truly me the Piscean spends a lot of time grappling with this question and it is it swamps them with doubt because the sense of self really is the nature of the solar impulse it allows you to bring yourself to a a, a fixed point in terms of you know a reference point that you can now say me you they don't have that so the the Piscean struggles with boundaries because they cannot tell the difference where does where do I start and stop and where do you begin? They have a persona for every face they have ever met. They have a persona for every location they have ever been in. Even they have a persona for their parents, each individual parent, for their siblings, each individual sibling. They just match whatever conditions that they find themselves in. And so by the time they have created hundreds or even you know <laughs> tens or hundreds of personalities, they struggle with which one is really them. The resolution to that is that they are all of them. That's the maturity when it comes in. They are all of these personalities. The reconciliation is that they had the need to create all of these personalities. That thing that had the need to create all of these personalities, that's who they really are. 
And so it is in their best interest to find themselves in circumstances or situations where they can deploy this as a contributable, constructive aspect of themselves. That's really what it is. Okay? And that stops all the confusion. Okay? And this is what one of the things that allows the Piscean, because these qualities, it's one thing that becomes so many things. It allows the Piscean to become any sign that they want. They can take on the shape of any environment. They can become anyone. They can exhibit the qualities or the characteristics of any type of human being that they want for short periods of time before they have to retire into seclusion to recharge those imaginative batteries. So you are dealing with someone who, if they decide, especially when the Piscean placements are significant, they can train themselves to be first-class spies. They can morph into anyone. They would lie. You would never be able to tell the difference. But for the safety of most people, most Piscians are never like that. When they begin to start playing games, they play it locally and, you know, around... And so the Piscean sensibilities are suited to theater, film, all aspects of imaginative storytelling represents an outlet, a constructive outlet for them. Also the ability to form music, but it's not the structure of music per se. It is the ability of music to transport from one reality system to another. That's really what it is. And so each Piscean is tuned to certain types of melodies that allows them to enjoy the nature of this transport. Okay. Now, Neptune has a very strong affiliation with the nature of Pisces. Neptune is a very concentrated form of this Piscean energy. And where you find Neptune in your natal chart is where these qualities, as I have been describing them, are going to be evident in your reality. At least in a very concentrated but uh, limited form. Because as an ascendant, the Piscean influence dominates everything. It's extremely powerful, but as 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 a pinpoint as Neptune in a particular you know in a particular location in the natal chart, it brings the influence of that Pisces into that point as a reference, so that the Piscean ascendant itself is now conditioned by the placement of that Neptune, whatever wherever it is located in the natal chart, that now forms the the um, essence of the narrative that is indicated by the Pisces rising. And then this is further enhanced by the nature and condition of the 12th house. So if you're a Piscean rising, the placement of Neptune and the condition of your 12th house, especially if there are any functional lights or planets, I call planets come functional lights. That's the term I use. If you understand, if you really want to a deeper understanding why I use that term, then join my classes. But if you have these functional lights located in the 12th house, then you know the entire narrative is woven together. And these narratives are all connected that way. Okay? Then before you now have the aspects of all... It's always a story. And the story is hierarchical, meaning that there's several layers to the story. You know, the, the higher the hierarchy, the more important in the sense of awareness that you feel that that functional light or that placement is in. The, the deeper you go into the narrative, right, the less important that it is in terms of the influence it has on... But every... All the connections, all the aspects and all the placement, they are linked to the, the, the nature of decision-making trajectories. Because when you make a decision, what happens is that you are following one of the aspects of the trajectories in your natal chart. And the outcome it leads you to is specified in your natal chart. That's how the natal chart is. That's why I say it's a complex system. It's not, you know, I see a lot of people doing analytical work on, on, on natal charts but that's not the way to look at a natal chart you look at it that way it's a very high probability that you're not going to get a correct thing because it's a complex system it is only open to synthesis not analysis because everything is within the context of everything else and in order to get the full meaning you must synthesize everything okay so the analysis will just take you so far but you must synthesize everything into oneness. And it is this synthesization into oneness that the Piscean mind is ideally suited for. In fact, the more complex and absolutely intractable it is, the more the Piscean is able to understand it. 
The problem with Pisces is that everything appears too simple. They don't understand that level of simplicity. It just doesn't correlate with their internal state of awareness. They expect things to be so highly connected that nobody sees how it goes anymore in terms of cause and effect. So when they approach those levels of sophisticated levels of difficulty with seeing how it goes, they, are, they become more comfortable because they are able to spiritualize everything and they are guided by a strong intuition that understands the nature of this spiritualization process. They cannot really explain to you how they understand it. They just understand it because it's who they are. Okay? So as usual, if you want, if you're a Piscean rising of your, or you have significant Piscean placement and you want a detailed understanding, a synthesis into what this means for your personality and the trajectories and the opportunities and the, 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 the threats and whatever you want to call them, you know, I don't really believe in good and bad in the natal chart. I believe that everything is there as a potential. And once you understand what your narrative is, then you understand the context of the choices that you are supposed to make. Some people are under the misguided notion that once you understand your narrative, then your entire life becomes simple. Are you kidding me? It doesn't work like that. Your narrative includes or most likely includes difficulty. That's why it's a life. And that's why the things that we do not understand within ourselves, we externalize them as difficult conditions. You know, it, it, <laughs> this might sound very far-fetched. I get a lot of oohs and ahs when I teach this. People don't really understand. What, what are you saying? I'm saying that a decision within yourself, they reckon, because it, the only thing that you're experiencing is that you are experiencing interaction with various aspects of yourself. That's what you call your cognition. Your thinking process, what do you think you're doing? You're interacting with various aspects of yourself. Now, th these interactions, there's some of it that you don't understand. Some of it that you cannot accept because you simply cannot believe that you are that way. And so you externalize them as difficult conditions that capture the essence of that uh, lack of understanding. Now, the idea is that the conflict leads to resolution and then the resolution becomes internalized as a sense of being which allows you to move past that sense that part of yourself that is holding you back that's how it's supposed to work but the general thing of what happens is that most people are caught in those decisions that they do not understand and they begin their attempts at resolution means that they get to repeat the same thing over and over and over again because they do not understand it that's where i come in I help you to understand that, but I can make the choice for you. So when I do natal chart synthesis, I basically just open up the whole thing for you and you say, this is what it is. The rest is up to you. I'm not saying that this is going to solve all your life problems. I'm not saying, but at least you have a map. But a map doesn't tell you how to get from one place to another. It tells you that there is a, a route or a connection between the two places that you're trying to get to, where you are now and where you're trying to go. But how you're going to get there, that's up to you. By understanding yourself better, you're able to intuit the best possible means of getting from one place to another. Because every decision you make has consequences. And that is the nature, that is the structure of karma. It's just causality. Okay? Alright.